9am at Sunderland's Adult Services, home to the eight teams providing services for older people. For the City West Division, the day starts with a diary share meeting. Hello. Hi. Heading today's meeting is Rachel Dorat, who's acting up whilst her manager is on leave. A couple of things are just reminders, really. Um, the first one is the, the new, the new RAS forms, the community care yes. um, assessment documents. Rachel qualified as a social worker nine years ago and began her career in the team at Sunderland Royal Hospital. She joined Older People's Services three years ago and reached a senior level a year later. Every team have a diary share once a week. Um, the team managers attend SMT, which is Senior Management uh, Meeting, um, and they f basically um, trickle down the information um, from the directorate. Also in the meeting is Lisa Gawley, whose social work career began just 12 months ago. Lisa's colleague Bertha has an important issue to raise. There was an incident over the weekend where he had one of the members of the staff and uh, the manager of the home now wants him out. An unwell elderly man has assaulted a carer at his residential home and the home wants him to leave. Rachel and the team are concerned that it could be a hasty reaction. He's had one incident and it was a serious incident. I think the challenge in behaviour too, okay. need to be involved. It's a difficult situation with potentially serious consequences for the elderly man. As acting team manager, it's now Rachel's job to speak directly to the home. Um, Bertha said that um, you wanted to speak to her manager in regards... The man was placed in the home just three weeks ago um, after he was assessed as being unable to cope living independently. So Rachel already knows his case history. The gentleman, unfortunately, lacks capacity to make his own choices about place of accommodation. He wasn't able to manage his insulin. Um, he wasn't able to judge when he was having a hypo. We had a big case conference where really the feeling was in his best interests it would be safer to be within a 24-hour care environment. But after that one incident, the home manager has been quite um, quick to then want him out. And we haven't really investigated the cause of um, the, the incident. We haven't looked at um, getting psychiatry involved. And furthermore, we haven't really looked at the Challenge and Behaviour team, which is it's accessible for you to um, directly refer to, to look at changing the home now and him moving out after three weeks, I think, you know, I think we need, it's a bit hasty, I, I feel. All right, thanks. She's yeah. going to refer to the Challenging Behaviour team and homes can directly refer to them to get their input as to how to manage um, someone's behaviour. I've also advised if any other incident happens again, she really needs to get on um, to look at uh, a, a mental health assessment. As Rachel writes up the case notes, Lisa is heading out to visit a woman who she helped to retain her independence after a serious illness jeopardised it. He had uh, a brain aneurysm um, back in March, uh, which set her back quite a long way. She spent quite a lot of time in hospital. Um, she spent six weeks in Farmer Court, which is our intermediate care centre. And then she's had a couple of weeks of reablement actually in her own home. And she's just recently finished that and we're just going to go and see how she's doing. 66-year-old Olive was very poorly when Lisa first met her. It was Olive's best friend Kathleen who persuaded Lisa that there was potential for recovery. Morning, Olive. How are you this morning? Lisa needs to be sure Olive's getting all the support she needs. Okey dok. I've just popped in this morning just to see how um, the carers are doing, Olive, because you've just changed over from, um, from the girls who were coming previously, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Lisa spent eight years as a senior care worker in a residential home for elderly people before embarking on her social work degree at Teesside University. It was a general social uh, social work. Um, we did kind of such as um, social policy, um, eth ethics and values. Um, the counsellor modules I found really helpful. Um, therapeutic communication uh, I found really good and I find that they, they most have benefited us since I've, I've come here. She just live local, does she? You care? Hi. Yeah, she just live around the corner. Awesome. Probably decided to do all the people because it's what I was comfortable with and for at least my first year of practice I wanted something I was familiar with. Does she treat the home with respect, Olive? Oh, yes. You're happy with the way she, yeah? And you feel that she's meeting your needs, okay, Olive, you're happy with that, yeah? Because I've obviously worked with all the people since I was 18, I know their kind of values and things like that, so that's helped. But also, um, because I'm now reviewing kind of care homes, I've got an idea of how care plans should be devised and stuff like that, so I know what, what to look for. So you'll be looking forward to going to visit Catherine and our new oh, house yes. then, yeah? How do you think you'll manage your bus at the moment, Olive? How, how confident would you feel? 
don't know. You don't know. I think maybe it's a couple of trips with Kathleen. Uh, um, that's good. Uh -huh. And then maybe you never know. We're focusing a lot more on kind of community living now and, and personalisation and stuff like that. And we do get quite a few referrals in for 24 hour care, but they are starting to kind of fizzle out now that I think the mindset of a lot of older people, especially here, um, are that, you know, you get to a certain age and that's kind of where you go. But I think we are starting to change that now and people are accepting support at home um, and the extra care schemes that we went to there. Um, so that's really good as well. See you later. Bye. You're going to that. Bye. I think it went really well. It was um, it was a positive um, it was a positive review. Um, I think Olive's really happy with um, kind of a new bungalow and a new surroundings. If it wasn't for Lisa, she wouldn't have been where she is now. I mean, the doctors told me that she would be in a home all her life, and then Lisa came in, and me and Lisa had a, a talk, and then she got out of the bungalow. So I'd rather be here. It's much better. I think it's been positive for Olive, but also for our family and our friends to watch as well. Three months earlier, um, we thought she was going to have to go into a nursing home, which, where, you know, that potential would, wouldn't have been met because people would have been doing for her rather than showing her what to do. So it's been, it's been a really good experience. Meanwhile, Rachel's also out on the road. She's on her way to check up on 94-year-old Vera, who she's recently placed into Sunderland's newest extra care housing scheme. Extra care is sort of a home for life. It's um, basically 40, 40 so flat uh, apartments within a, um, a building. It's um, very much about independent living, yet with the support on hand. So there's care staff available 24-7. What happened is I received an assessment um, to, to assess Vera's needs on discharge from hospital. Um, and at that point, she was felt very strongly about not returning back to her property. She's been there about four weeks, um, so we're going to do a review of how things are so far. How are you? Oh, fine. I've been flopped, I've not seen you. Good. <laughs> I've just come today just really to see how things are since you've moved in to Bramble. Wonderful. How have things been since you actually moved in in terms of your flat? And First class. Yes. Good. And thanks to you. Right. And what about the carers? Pun. What about the people who help you? The, the, I mean, now, at the minute, yeah. first class. Right. I mean, it's everything you said. I mean, they help me in every way, all of them. Good. I've always wanted to be a social worker since I was about 12, I think. I went from being, wanting to be a firefighter to a, to a social worker. So it's just been this wanting to kind of contribute towards helping people and trying to make things better for people. Are the carers respectful Wonderful. with you when they're talking to you? Yes, very, they're very helpful. I started at the hospital social work team and that gave me excellent grounding. Um, and I was there for about um, six years. You deal with anyone over 18 and it's all divisions and I think that gives you a really wide range of knowledge and also understanding about what resources are available for each of those um, client groups. Some people do tend to go from the hospital to the to older person services and I was at that point really wanting to progress. So the, has the move here sort of made you feel a bit more secure about uh, living by yourself? Yes, uh, it's, uh, that, uh, it's given me more confidence. Good, that's good. Vera is an amazing woman, I think, and uh, because she felt her life was over and um, this has given her a new lease of life, the way she describes it. Um, so what we'll do now is, um, Vera's case, I'll, I'll keep open for the four weeks and then what we'll do is um, it'll go back into the review system. So in a, in a year's time, which sounds like a long time away, um, we'll review it again. Sometimes you don't realise how much you help people, just seeing how happy she is compared to how she was in the hospital. Just, it is really rewarding and it's part of a job that I absolutely love. Rachel's duties don't stop with immediate service users. Her next call is about a much trickier case. She's on her way to Sunderland's Carers Centre to discuss how they might be able to help a woman who's struggling to look after her sick husband. So he's got quite high level need. Um, he lives with his wife um, and they have very minimal support because John um, really 
is quite reluctant to accept a lot of support. Mm -hmm. So it really falls upon his wife, which, and she has her own health problems, so she's finding it quite difficult. You say you've done a care assessment for her already? I've, I've done a care assessment, yes. Um, when you're in a situation where someone's really desperate and upset, um, and if you can't help them for whatever reason, for example, the, the service user won't accept that little bit more help, which would just be amazing for his wife. He has the mental capacity to refuse a service, um, and that's difficult for her to understand that we can't just overrule him. Rachel and her team deal with situations like this every day, based on assessments made under the Mental Capacity Act. It's just part and parcel of every day because we need to be looking at people's mental capacity around um, the huge decisions like change of accommodation. We need to also look at the mental capacity around finances and that's become more and more prominent of late. Part of that's due to personalisation, looking forward to direct payments in terms of people choosing what care they want and where they want it. And what we need to acknowledge is whether people have the mental capacity to be able to manage a direct payment or their um, suitable person um, who can act on their behalf. But I can perhaps work with, with the carer to um, approach the gentleman as, as, as to how uh, it would benefit both yes. of them yeah. to have respite. It's the emotional side of things for me. You go home and you can't just switch off. You, you do think about people. You go and leave and you, you think about what's happened. Rachel will work with the carer's centre to ensure that the man and his wife receive as much support as possible. Back at the office, social worker Bertha updates Rachel about the man who was at risk of being evicted from his residential home. And, um, she said that she's happy to, to keep placement while she's waiting for the CPNs to do the assessment. Bye. It's good news for now. They were happy to retain his placement until the appropriate assessment was done and then we could look at um, whether it is appropriate for him to move on or not. So at the minute things are okay. It's now getting towards the end of the day and a chance for Rachel to catch up on paperwork. As well as acting manager, she's also practice teacher and on the out of hours rota. It can be stressful, which is part of it that I really enjoy. Um, and it really enables you to use the skills that you've got in terms of trying to juggle things. I think challenges um, for, for anybody in social work is probably always going to be resources. It's always going to be money. For all you can, you, you know what people need. Um, you can't always give it to them and that's quite hard. Um, and it's quite hard, it sometimes can take it quite personally as well. Um, but I do enjoy it, yeah. I mean, I've only been here a year, so, you know, but I do enjoy it and it's, it's been a very quick year um, and I've learnt a lot in a year. I know it sounds really corny, but I absolutely, I love my job. I do enjoy coming to work. I enjoy working with people. I enjoy the, the, the different challenges that are thrown at you. Sometimes it could be just simply, I come back and then Someone's not very happy, so they want to speak to a manager, so that's, that's what if, if my manager's not around, I would have to do that. Somebody phones in sick, then you have to run around trying to get cover for duty or any appointments that they had. So I love my job in terms of the variety, and I'm busy, and I, I like being busy, and I like people, and, um, and I like to think that we can make a difference, and I'd like to be part of that, like success stories like Vera.